Here. Uh, Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes? Nope. Mr. Reuchel? Here. Mr. Hammer? No. Mr. Homicki? No. Uh, Mr. Dean? Here. Mr. Allard? Here. Mr. Edwards? Here. Ms. Antoniak? Nope. Mr. Silver? Here. Thank you. So we have uh, all voting tonight. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to welcome our new clerk, Lynn Rowe. <laughs> Thank you. Good to have you here. Peace. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, four public hearings this evening. Um, so when we call the public hearing, we'll ask the applicant to come up uh, to present the application. We'll open up to public comment. Uh, then we'll have the applicant come back up, uh, have a rebuttal, open up to questions from the uh, commissioners, and then we may close the hearing uh, and vote or continue to the next uh, meeting. So right now I'd like to call up 3.1 public hearing, application number 1960-17Z. Uh, Jay Patel seeking a special permit in accordance with section 6.3 signing regulations to install LED pump topper signs at 1340 Silestein Highway. Is the applicant, can you please come up, state your name, and just tell us a little bit about the application. Good evening, everyone. Pankaj Patel, <coughs> representing Jay Patel. Uh, we have a gas station on uh, 3440 Celestine Highway. And right now we have the gas tag price. So we are like, it's a, just changing manually on the gas uh, pump. We, we, are, uh, we want to convert to, uh, to the electronic sign. So a person doesn't need to go out and change back manually. So we can uh, uh, change it from the office. And better vision for other people. Okay. Are there any questions by the commissioners? These are just the the ones that are on top of the pumps, the ones that are like exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. Is it static? Like, does it is it just the one number and that's it, or does it do like a? Because some of them have like it's different if you use a credit card or if you. No, it uh, right now it is a is a ma magnetic on the top of the the pump. Right. You where you see the all all the signs is a is a magnetic, so person has to like take it out and put the new number. That's what they are. So now. like to uh, yeah. do on a eight yeah. pumps yeah. is a time consuming, yeah. and in the winter time it is a very hard. Yeah. And if the person is short, he cannot reach. So like for the electronic sign, just from the office, we can control it. We can just change it uh, at the, the convenience. Will the new one take up the whole area above the blue part as shown in this mock-up here? Yeah. Will it take up that whole area where it says uh, enjoy your drive, for example? No, that, that's going to be stayed there because that, oh, that is a, so that is a part of the... Between the existing, what, show existing exactly. numbers and that. Yes. Right in that. Okay, so it takes up another, the white space in between. Okay, thank you. And these won't be flashing, right? It'll just be static? No, static. Okay. It's it, it, it going to be static. Static, okay. Yes. Uh, also, um, on your exhibit, uh, the, the right hand uh, looks like a cross section. The, is the size of the sign, uh, uh, you know, equivalent to uh, that that is shown with the kind of an, an eye above the uh, above the pole cross section? Yes, above the pole section. So, uh, I, above the pole section. Relatively speaking, it looks to be the sign looks to be about uh, uh, maybe one twentieth of the height of the uh, of the pump itself. Hmm. And uh, the proposed sign um, that uh, will we'll go there, you indicate it's going to be automatically controlled from the office. Uh, is that via uh, wiring that's going to have to be installed uh, mm -hmm. through? Is it's going it's, to use a radio signal? It's going to be using the radio signal. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, the commission's thinking I'll read the, uh, there was some correspondence from the town planner dated November 2nd, uh, basically stating that section 6.3, no sign shall contain flashing or intermittent illumination, moving parts, 
exposed neon lights, animation unless otherwise approved by the commission. Uh, no message shall be, no message content can be periodically changed. Um, so that's in there for the record. So I think you, your application complies with that uh, uh, section. Any other questions by the commission? If none, I'll open up to public comment. Are there any comments from the public? Okay. Make a motion to close the hearing. Second. A second. Uh, all, 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 opposed, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Right. Make a motion we approve Aye. application 196017Z as submitted um, for static. Thank you. LED signs on the tops of the gas pumps, 21 and 5 inches, inches high, as shown. Second. 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 Any discussion? Any not? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Get that? No, but that's. <laughs> I'll it's all recorded. Who made the motion? Yeah, I know. Uh, motion. I did, and Tom seconded. Tom seconded. Tom Dean. Who was the first? Me. Richard. 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 Yeah. Richard. Richard. We'll slow it down for you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, <clears throat> 3.2 public hearing application number 1961-17Z, Safari Energy. Uh, Christian Paola, if I pronounced that correctly, uh, seeking a special permit in <clears throat> accordance with section 5.3 for the installation of solar panels at 50 Olison Road. You state your name and address, please. My name is Christian Paolella, project manager for Safari Energy, address 989 New York, uh, 989 6th Avenue, New York, New York. Can you we are proposing a 64 kW solar rooftop system on 50 Olson Road, uh, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Um, we'll have 160 modules, four inverters. And uh, we have some questions that you guys wanted to address and um, that were sent to us via, um, via email. Is it something you guys want to jump into right now? There was uh, five questions that you had for us. Uh, we do. Do you have a? Um, so we're still reviewing the plan. I think we can talk a little bit more about the panels, the size sure. of them. Sure. You know, which buildings are going to be located so on? So there's there's two um, two rooftops that we're going to be on top of. There's um, the electric rooms are underneath to avoid trenching across the parking lot. Um, the module sizes are. about seven feet by four feet. They're sitting about 9.2 inches off the, uh, the roof deck. The uh, setbacks are a minimum of six feet fire code, uh, though we exceed that in uh, most places. The uh, areas that are screening these, uh, can they be, will they be seen from the ground level? Uh, and your ground mm -hmm. level is over there. It is. So ground level as in, in the uh, extra space parking lot area and down by the road, no, you would not be able to see it via There's line a of sight. There's parapet there, I know. Yes, and however. Was it building two or? Building two, correct. Yeah, and then up at, uh, yeah, the one at the top maybe, but I don't know. Maybe now, I would see with the uh, the leaves on the trees, you wouldn't be able to see them through, you know, through the forest there. However, you know, when the, you know, when the leaves they're, fall. They're dark colored, so they don't. Correct, correct. They're, they're blue, uh, it's a blue crystal, and uh, they don't reflect sun. The framing doesn't reflect, reflect sun. They're designed to obviously, obviously absorb sun. So they have the same uh, consistency as uh, fresh concrete or leaves on a tree when it comes to reflection. 
say that again, the last thing. As it comes to, uh, when it comes to reflection, yeah. similar to uh, leaves on a tree or fresh concrete. So very minimal. Oh, fresh yeah, right. concrete. I, I think I read that in here. If I handled that. Okay. On that. Um, I was very impressed with your site. I'll say that much up front. I don't normally say this to an applicant, but uh, the quality of your site uh, is good over there. Thank you. Uh, very well made. Uh, is I could see the condominiums through the trees a little bit at this point in the year. I, when the full foliage is on that side, which is I guess north, uh, you can't see those too well. I would imagine not too well now. No, if you you know if you find a hole in the trees somewhere, I didn't happen to notice um, you know clear visibility through there when I was when I was walking the site. Right. Um, I'm sure there's a way, you know, if, if you know, if, if you're up in the woods there, I'm sure there's a way you could see through there. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Well, you've kept uh, some kind of trees up or they did on the other side. I, don't know which, mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, <clears throat> I think they're relatively reasonably protected compared to up an arrow road, which is another owner yes. further up and over an arrow, you know, near you. Yeah. That, uh, the whole site's pretty problem. much uh, protected from the street there. Being up, um, you know, behind this, uh, there's a there's a motel there. Yeah. yeah. And the, the modules being only nine inches off the deck with the setback, it's going to be pretty difficult to see them. Okay. Um, Thank you. Unless you're up above them, of course. Thank you. Yes. Which way are they going to be aimed? They actually sit flush with the roof. A standing okay. seam rooftop. There's uh, there's no there's no pitch to them. They sit flush. Okay. They don't rotate at all. Just they don't rotate. There's no movement. Okay. Yep. And access for installation and cleaning. Uh, roof access. I um, <coughs> most likely it's going to be ladder, and uh, they'll use pressure washers, <coughs> and it happens once a year. We do maintenance once a year. <coughs> we'll check once. Uh, well, twice a year we do maintenance. Once we come out, we check all the electrical components, the torquing on all the modules, and a second visit for cleaning. Any other questions by the commissioners? Question: <clears throat> What is your relationship with the owner as far as the ownership of the? This is my first application. Sort mm -hmm. and a sense amount of the commission, so okay. this is new for me. So, extra space storage, we're the developer for extra space storage. We do all of their solar uh, nationwide and from Hawaii to, to Maine. So, you own, the, you own the panels, they own the systems, they, they own the systems, they so they, the they're systems. gonna own the system, they are going to own the system. Yes, they're not buying electricity from us. We actually don't own systems, we uh, that's not part of our uh, so you're just going to install, maintain. Yes, install and maintain. We have an O and M agreement with them, operations and maintenance agreement, for I think it's um, 20 years with a five-year extension, if they wish. Is the power going to be used on site, or is it going to be put back into the grid? It'll be used on site. Those okay. a uh, it's a net metered system, bi-directional meter. So during the day, it's going to be pushing um, power back. At nighttime, it'll be drawing. Okay. We can't exceed the yearly usage of the site. Right. So okay. So it's, it's 90, not like a generation facility. Yeah, it's not a generation facility. Okay. Right. Will the um, amount of electricity which is generated, you know, from the panel be sufficient for pretty much the total needs of the development? Uh, typically, we design 90 percent. Yeah. There's plenty of roof on that site, so this yeah. was, this was the maximum that we could install. There's not a lot of energy use there anyway, except the lights, I assume. So. Correct. Yeah. And I believe it's, um, um, they have air conditioning heating in there, so that, that's that's the other, most of their usage, power usage, in small office. How long has your company been in existence? Ten years. Have you looked into this at your company? I'll read some correspondence while the commissioner is reviewing the plans. Uh, it's dated uh, from Town Planner, dated November 2nd, uh, discussing a proposed activity, existing site conditions, some project history. Also, there's some site plan comments, uh, one through five. Now, Peter's had at least open address. 
Okay, so those five comments uh, have been addressed. Uh, there's also a memo dated November 2nd from a town engineer. Uh, I guess he had a comment uh, regarding the aerial photo legends on sheets one and two prepared by DCE Solar. Indicate panels will be indicated on the two easternmost buildings. Revise accordingly. Has that been addressed? Yes, sir. Okay. I guess the one more from the, from the fire marshal dated November 3rd. Uh, the plans do appear to meet the requirements of the Connecticut Fire Safety Code. And it looks like we received a uh, comment um, today, uh, November 8th, from John Tartaglia. Uh, I'm just going to read it into the record. Uh, we see that special permit application may not be considered without determination of whether or not it is judged by PZC to be a trucking freight operation with a complete visual screening under ZR 52H5, referring this regard to the interpretation previously applied to both uh, Gillespie and LaFontaine thereunder. He continues, our company believes the town has engaged in discriminatory enforcement. And we ask that this statement be made a part of the record for the above application. And uh, <coughs> there it is. <coughs> I'll give it to you afterwards. So. All right. Um, any more comments or questions from the commission? At this time, I'll open up to the public. Are there any uh, comments from the public? <coughs> All right. Hearing none. Make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. Second. Ah. All in favor? Oh, All right. we have a discussion. A couple of questions yep, here. Sure, discussion. Sorry, I didn't get to them before. Um, the, these units will not be, as we discussed before a little bit, from Olson Road, right? Which is the town, pl our town planner was concerned with. And uh, are you still concerned with it? No, I wasn't concerned. I was pointing out that uh, there's a Could parapet be. wall on the lowest one, which should screen it, and then the, the back unit. Um, is far enough back and the building is tall enough, you, you should not see it. These are only going to be um, nine inches uh, off of the deck. So, um, so has he screened the building? I, I don't think there's a need to. He, oh, he doesn't need to. I doesn't need to. Top no. One. Oh, okay. Uh, and you haven't had any complaints from the crossing people? We received some phone calls um, and explained the nature of the application. Uh, however, Nobody submitted correspondence or obviously showed up uh, tonight. Uh, I did go back into the crossings and um, a couple of the end units on some of the cul-de-sacs will already view the roofs uh, of, uh, of this site. Uh, so I'm not sure, you know, additional, you know, rooftop mm -hmm. mechanicals is really going to have much but more. But they're not impact. afraid to speak up over there. No, they are not. Uh, they have historically... Uh, mm -hmm. come to these meetings and voice their particular positions on things. So uh, it must not have risen to the level that they were uh, concerned about it. So, um. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, so we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, closed. Any discussion? I just want to say that I think it's, uh, I want to commend the owner of the property for considering this type of a project. I, I think it's, it's a wonderful thing. I think it's, I'd like to see more of it. Um, I think that the fact that these panels are going up and there's alternative means of, of energy is, is good for the town of Wethersfield and we should encourage it. It doesn't. I would agree with that, especially if it's uh, screened and not, not doesn't obstruct anyone's view. That's of course, so. they're subject to, of course, conditions, but uh, overall the concept is a good concept and should be encouraged where applicable. I, I too applaud uh, the, the applicant for uh, its, its efforts in this regard. And uh, uh, since I have heard pri you know, previous applications with regards to uh, some solar, pa solar panel installations, and have uh, uh, heard uh, you know, commissioner comments with regards to that and concerns expressed. This does not seem to rise to the occasion uh, to uh, invoke those kinds of uh, concerns that have been expressed in the past. And I would uh, tend to, I, I plan on, when a motion is made, I would I intend to uh, support the application. Great. Any other discussion or motions? 
throw it off and let somebody else do it. Is there a motion in favor? I'll make a motion that we approve application 1961-17-Z as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Application uh, 3.3, public hearing. Application number 1962-17-Z. Benjamin Congdon seeking a special permit in accordance with section 36C2 for an accessory building, 320 square foot barn style shed, larger and higher than permitted in a residential zone at 76 Farmstead Road. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. Um, Margie and I are asking for a special permit to construct a barn style shed in the back of our property at 76 Farmstead Road. If you look at the survey and sub submitted with the original application, um, in the rear back corner there is an existing shed and the surveyor proposed putting the shed over near that corner. He discovered when he was putting staking in that we have ledge in parts of the property so we don't know exactly where the shed's going to end up but we put the five foot setback along the property lines in the back that we're going to stay inside of but we're going to just move it around slightly depending on what the excavation for the footings are or the, uh, the pilings um, could end up possibly being right where the other shed is but it's a matter of topography we have so much topography here that um, the shed that the placement of the other shed is already six and a half feet below street grade at the front yard. So that's part of it. The photographs, the original, if, they're, if the copies aren't clear enough, <coughs> we're trying to show two things. It's a rear lot with a lot of topography and wooding, which we we're trying to keep. We can't transport a shed back there if we wanted to get one, um, because there isn't enough room. And we didn't want to damage the vegetation. We have a lot of existing vegetation that we're trying to work around so that the shed won't um, if you look at the, pi the pictures, you can't even see the existing shed from the street already because the vegetation is so developed. Um, we're looking for a 16 by 20 with a loft for the shed that we're trying to build. So I can't think of anything else that's important. Well, you have electricity there? Hmm? Electricity will be wired? I haven't decided yet. We may have to because I think the existing shed already had wiring to it. We may just utilize that or if not put new wiring into code. But you're going to remain, remain in that southeast quadrant? Yeah, for this that's primary. Uh, we, we, we put the setback. We didn't, weren't surprised because we realized afterwards that there's also an underground sprinkler system that we don't want to interfere with, but we don't know where it is. Just so we're, we're, we're voting, I guess, on that southeast quadrant within a certain you know, range, obviously not a different part of the, of the property, but in that southeast quadrant. That's what we're looking for, yeah. Yes. Uh, you're uh, you're going to keep the existing shed. Well, it's oh, a potting shed, sure. but I but I think the, the the topography issues became more apparent that we may have to just take that shed down and place it right on top of it because there's still more drop off to the rear of the lot, another six feet or so. So I don't really want to have piling sticking up six feet to put a shed in, and the flattest place is where the other one is in yeah. the garden. It's there. You want to put it on the ground more than up on pilings, then? Huh? Yeah. If the piling's the piling's been near gra ground grade with, with wood posts because coming Because of the ledge yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. I want to drive my tractor in this. The existing you, 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 have a, you have a very large lot 
backing up to the country club, the southern part of the country club. Yes. And um, my my opinion, I walked in the other day. And, yeah. Uh, you have a lot of vegetation around it, and good vegetation, older but good. I mean, it's uh, screens, it's evergreen, some of it, a good yeah. part of it. Um, We're trying to keep all that as much as possible yeah, when we put the shed in because it gives you know. us privacy. Yeah. And right. um, the privacy back there, I, I don't think you can have it. I mean, you've got a lot of it. I mean, it's what, well, some guys out in the country club uh, might. Well, not even that, but. Um, like one of the things with the shed design we looked at, we wanted to change the windows to the type we showed in the photographs because we didn't want to, the ones that the kit showed were more prone to getting broken by golf balls or flying objects like that, whereas the other type that we put in. I don't know, you've got good vegetation back there. I don't know how many golf balls you get in the back. Uh, Do you get some? Oh, we've got over a gallon of them already. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised. Um, um, Let's put it this way. When we bought the house, one of the windows was broken. It appeared to be from a ricocheted golf ball. The neighbor to our right has reported that over the 20 years he's lived there, he's had maybe two windows broken by golf balls. It's not, That's it's not like a, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, exactly. it's just, if you buy next to a golf course, you've got to expect golf balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, you, you have an interesting site. Uh, Triangular it's like an upside down right. piece of pie with a chunk out of the bottom. We're real where all this is going. And, yeah, uh, but you're not bothering any neighbors. You can't even see any neighbors from your backyard almost. Yeah, you I mean, can. That's the way I look um, at it. But the, the other side, there's a big chunk in the back. You walk the property today, the left side was where the existing shed was. Yeah, right. That's, on the all, right, that's the only part I really walk. So. Well, okay, on the right side where the, the crest is, right behind the porched area, there is a third more of the lot back there. So space-wise, that would be the, pace to put, the place to put the shed. But the topography is so severe, it would be hard walking to it or bringing that. I mean, I'm basically doing it so I can have a place to put my lawn tractor and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it would be harder to utilize you need it. need this big a building for all of that. Well, we, we're having problems with our, we bought the house and we're discovering more problems than we expected. And there's moisture in the basement we have to figure out how to deal with. And there's also gases coming from somewhere that are, giving you headaches and everything else, and I haven't been able to get solutions from either the MDC or the State Health Department. The Town Health Department was useless. So we're still working with that issue, but we don't want to put anything in the basement that's got antiques or stuff like that. We can use the loft in the shed to store oh, okay. those kind of things. So you have good that's why we, you're wanting the larger building. Now. Yes, that was the purpose. And we want to fix them in the long run, but we need to fix it in the meantime. Any other questions? Yeah, I got a question on the construction. Is this is this sort of like, does it come flat packed and each wall is constructed and then it's erected that well, here's way? The, here's the wrinkle of it, that the kit, the kit you're seeing there was down in Ch Christiansburg, Virginia, where I found it. And the companies and the workmen that deal with it there, excellent reputation. The contacts I've checked through here with Home Depot up here, far less than stellar replication, so I'm trying to find a way to deal with the space limit that I'm designing and the utilization of it and salvage parts from the garage that I got the variance for two months ago in order to fix my garage, and I couldn't get this variance until I got that variance. So I'm dancing through your regulatory avenues to fix my house. The reason I'm asking is the actual <laughs> construction of this structure which is pretty tall um, right next to some large trees in your backyard the actual construction of it might limit the location that you can put it versus the actual size of the unit because that's one of the issues but depending the, on what kind of equipment's needed to erect yeah. the thing well the other so, well, just something to think you can't about. bring the equipment back to it. it's got to be done by man because the the app we don't want to, to bring any equipment back there like trucks or cranes yeah. um, that would destroy the vegetation to get there Okay, that was basically my question there. Which we don't want to do. Okay. I don't even know if you get it back in there. Boy, I don't know how get in there. Steep. Yeah, it, it's, it's steep, it's, it's, it's rolling. Don't and, do it in um, the springtime. But we've, I've dealt with worse, so it's not, not, <clears throat> not, not impossible. Yes? Um, I'm curious, the, uh, the lot coverage size of the existing improvements on the, uh, 
on the site. Do you have that uh, calculated? No. I wasn't told I had to have it, and I went through Justin for the zoning on the garage, and, these t and I told him then that I was trying to do the shed, and he says, no, you've got to go to the planning for the shed. I explained the size of the shed was the same, and they confirmed everything was acceptable, so I never bothered to deal with it. It's a fairly large lot. It's three-quarters of an acre, I think. Um, according to the data that uh, you've got here on the, on the journal notes from your surveyor, uh, your parcel is... Uh, uh, 0.49 acres, so it's just under a half. Just an under acre. half. The, well, whatever. Um, and my my only concern is that uh, I wouldn't like to see the total amount of lot coverage exceed the 25% uh, threshold with the inclusion of uh, this shed. Um, ask the town planner if if that uh, presents a problem with this application. There's a separate calculation for uh, accessory structures, and let me find it. <clears throat> the maximum coverage of all accessory buildings and structures on a lot shall not exceed more than 40% of the required rear yard area. So um, just looking at the size of the structure versus the rear yard area, it's nowhere it's fractional uh, when compared to that 40% requirement. So I don't, I don't have any concerns at all about that. The, the separate issue about the existing house, and I can't really speak to, but it's an existing condition. So um, they, they, it's a, so it's a separate calculation. And um, as I said, if you look at the rear yard there and the size of the structure, uh, it should not be anywhere near a problem. So it looks like by right, uh, they can build 200 square feet, and you're asking for... 320, so an additional 120 square feet. Uh, and for the vertical height, I guess by right, we can build, they can build uh, 18 feet. Uh, and the applicant's requesting uh, 19 feet, four inches, uh, so a foot, four inches above that. And my question for that, now I haven't been in a backyard. I assume that backyard is level, because that, that 19, that 18 feet's really from the ground up, I believe. Um, so I just just keep that in mind. I don't know if that, that backyard's level or not. It's a little flatter than the side yards, but yeah. not still, still slow. Yeah, yeah there's, there's about a seven foot drop from the front yard to get to the back of the house, yeah. and um, there's another seven or eight feet more drop to the rear property line. So we're trying to work with a the ledge restriction. I mean the ledge problem as well as the slope mm -hmm. and the topography to, to get the shed in in the best possible location with the least amount of elevation off the ground. But from the street level, seven feet of it is already mm -hmm. underground in terms of your view from the street level. So if, if you saw it, but you can't through the vegetation, you'd only be seeing about eight or 10 feet of it. But you're not proposing to bring any fill or anything like that uh, to Don't the property? Either. Okay. Any other questions by the commissioner? Just a question. Looking at the section cuts, there's a pull-down stair and a walk-up stair. Pull-down stairs, well, we preferred. That's what I showed the other section on the back. That was my preference for the loft. Okay. I showed the other one with the stair because it gave the elevations yeah, no, that's that the why town was... required. Okay. Because of the elevations and the size of the shed, have you... I know the neighbors are far away. The houses are far away. I drove by. Have you discussed this project with neighbors? Mm, the neighbor to the right, well, I sent the notices out to all the neighbors. Except for the notices. No, no, but I also included in the notices everything that you got in the original application. Okay. With the elevations, the sketch, the photograph, the survey, and the proposed approximate placement of the shed at that time. The in case they had any concerns, it would give them pieces of to ask the questions. Because it did seem like a it seems fairly large for a shed, yeah. but when we lose, we have no attic, useful attic to store, and the problem with the moisture and the gases in the basement makes that virtually useless right now. Have you had any comments from neighbors? None. Um, I didn't have any comments either when I did the zoning application on the garage, which was far more, that was up in the front of the house and on the right, and we were, because of the shape of the lot, that upside down piece of pie, if you looked at the survey, you'll see that we penetrated it, I think it was 12 inches by 18 inches, a piece of pie, and that was what the whole issue for the variance was. 
You might be asking what the variance was on that garage? Or was it too close to the side yard? It was a 12 foot side yard setback. Yeah, and right since we were trying to make the house a one-story usable house to bring the laundry equipment upstairs, we had to extend the garage. Um, but by the variance regulations, we couldn't extend it bigger to put the lawn and garden equipment in the garage because we would have penetrated the side yard setback more. And the requirement is the minimum penetration possible. So we designed it to accommodate that, but that's why we needed the shed. And the ZBA's decision was you had to have that done before you did this? Or yeah, we couldn't do it at the same time for some reason. Okay. It's weather's field. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? At this time, I'll read some correspondence uh, from town planner dated November 2nd, discussing the application. application. Uh, and other than the height in, in square foot area, it complies with all their zoning requirements. And also a memo from the town engineer dated October 24th, uh, discussing a request to install erosion controls, which are sill fence, um, for the installation. I thought that would be more important in my building permit than on this variant. Well, that, that's his comment, so. Okay, that, that's, not uh, an issue. Yeah. Uh, to me. This, at this time, I'll open up to the public. Are there any uh, questions or, or comments from the public? Okay, hearing none. I move we close public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion passes. Thank any, you. Uh, any discussion or? Uh, a motion for this application. Do a motion to approve application. I'll make a second to the motion. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Should I finish the motion? Should I finish the motion? All right. 196217 Z um, for the uh, shoot. for accessory building structure as submitted, uh, provided that sediment erosion control is provided during construction. I don't know if we need any more. There was no other, no further construction. All right. Is there a second? Second to that. Any discussion? Um, just, I, would, um, I, I didn't quite hear the motion, but uh, I would recommend that uh, as a condition just to uh, uh, to keep things in accordance with our usual practices to uh, uh, have a uh, make the, uh, the application uh, approval uh, subject to the condition of for the installation of, a, of erosion controls as uh, recommended uh, uh, by the town engineer. I think that's included in is the original included? motion. Okay, I, that's why I said I didn't quite hear it. So. Yeah, it is included in the original motion. Um, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, public hearing 3.4, application number 196317Z100, Great Metal Road Associates. Seeking a special permit in accordance with sections 5.2, permitted principal uses, 5.3, accessory uses, 5.8, alcoholic beverages, 6.2, parking and loading requirements uh, of the legislative zoning, uh, and to modify application 1886-15Z, including the conversion of office space to a community room, erecting an exterior tent for special occasions, dispensing of alcoholic beverages in a shared parking agreement at 100 Great Meadow Road. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we get started, I have to recuse myself from this application. Right, you're recused. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Attorney Brian Silver. I'm with the law firm of Silver & Silver LLP out of New Britain, Connecticut. I'm also a resident of the town of Weathersfield, 23 John Elaine. Um, present with me today is Kevin Johnson from Close Jensen & Miller PC and also the applicant himself. Chris Henney, who is the sole member of 100 Great Meadow Road Associates, LLC. Um, to begin with, before we summarize the actual application that's before the commission today, I just want to touch base on what's already been approved with respect to this project. Um, as you, you may recall, back in November of 2015, uh, this commission approved several components that are currently underway. 
Uh, the first is an area located in the atrium of this office building uh, known as the Atrium Cafe. It's a full service restaurant with a full bar. It's located on the main level of the office building. Uh, it's currently in operation right now. If any of the uh, members of the commission have been there, you, you probably see Chris there or, or his wife uh, working in the restaurant. Um, their vision expanded a little bit and they presented an application to create a larger restaurant in the northwest quadrant of the building facing the river. Currently that's under construction, aptly named River. Uh, that's already been approved by the commission. And to the rear of that restaurant, they also have a multi-level deck that's being constructed right now, and also a lower level patio uh, with a bar down there and seating for guests and dining. Again, a full service restaurant. That has all been approved already by the commission in November of 2015. What we're here for today, this pending application, is to seek approval from the town to use some additional areas of the office building to coincide with uh, Chris's vision of the restaurant use. Um, what's before the commission now is three areas. One is the what's been known as the community room. I realize it might be hard for you to see from where you're, staying, where you're sitting, but uh, this shaded area right here is the community room, and it's also highlighted a little bit larger on the, the map. I believe all of these maps have already been presented to the commission. The purpose of that community room is a multi-purpose. Right now it's office space. Uh, the goal is to convert it to a community room to be used by tenants uh, with respect to if, if a tenant has a smaller space and they want to hold some type of a function for their employees, uh, for seminars, for those types of things. And I know uh, the owner is also interested in possibly using that area for um, overflow for other functions that might be needed. In addition, we're looking for approval to use the lobby area of the office building. Again, this is a, a, a temporary idea, not anything permanent. It uh, would only be used when the office building itself is closed, but if someone was, were to rent the restaurant area for a wedding or a large function, uh, they could use the lobby area of the building as well. And the third component of this application is uh, to- Point out the lobby area. Absolutely. Right. Um, it's right in front of where the atrium is. When you walk in through the front doors, this is the parking area, when you walk in through the front door, uh, the lobby area goes all the way back to actually where that the long hallway correct and that's only the first floor of the lobby area is there it's, a second it's only floor? on the main level main correct? yes only on the main level up the steps and then down to where you have your your small restaurant that is correct and the third component is that the, that doesn't interfere with getting to the elevators or any of that kind of thing it certainly would not because well a couple of reasons one is the office building itself would only would be closed during the time where they use that lobby area uh, so there's not going to be office tenants going up the elevator to the offices. Uh, but also, uh, the owner is certainly fully aware of complying with any kind of fire regulations and safety regulations. So I, I believe he mentioned that they'd use planters to kind of block off what areas could be used uh, by the guests of this area to make sure that there's no uh, issues with respect to egress or ingress. Um, and again, the, the third component of what's before the commission today is the grassy area between the patio, which has already been approved, and the actual waterfront in front of the river. Um, it's the owner's goal to be able to use that, again, seasonal, seasonal um, and temporary, but to potentially put a tent up um, for wedding functions, for large gatherings. Um, it, it would not be a permanent structure. It would certainly be removed um, off season. It would be removed during any type of flood events, uh, but it would uh, provide the owners to use that area. Uh, obviously, it's a great attribute to the town to be able to um, enjoy that river frontage. And can you point out the grassy area? For Absolutely. For the us in the, in the public? Uh, this rippled area is the actual Connecticut River, and the grassy area is right in front of the tank um, It's labeled actually where the temporary tank would be installed, if in fact that was going to be installed. I believe it's 100 feet by 40 feet. That was the, uh, that was the example we used, yeah. The specimen of a proposed temporary tent that would be used. Is that flat? The, the roof of the tent? Where the tent is going. Yes, sir. More or less. I just heard that there is a pitch there. So that's something that like they would need to deal with. Not an issue? No. Uh, the floodplain is not an issue? Into the river. Not in our opinion. Okay. Another question. They're, they're not answer. seeking to install any kind of I permanent structure there. Another question you can answer during your go ahead. Um, what are the tent regulations mentioned by the 
further on here anyway. You got you know what I'm talking about? No. I'm not familiar with the tent regulations, no. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think it's fire, the fire marshal. Fire marshal. Fire marshal. Uh, there is a state of Connecticut extension. tent regulations. I'm sure it, it was probably from the original circus fire many, many mm -hmm. years ago. So um, I'm not familiar with those. But George, the only one who remembers that. I spotted it. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> it would be something that would need to be addressed. Obviously, anything that was going to be erected there would need to comply with every type of code that the town has. Uh, today we're seeking right. approval from a zoning standpoint to confirm whether or not the property is, is properly zoned for that type of use. Um, Mr. Henney did submit a, a two-page narrative with the application, so I'm not going to reread that into the record. It's already been presented. Um, I know there was some discussion as far as parking. Um, back in November 17 of 2015, um, the issue of parking with this uh, project was raised and the commission provided a waiver uh, for the deficiency in parking based upon the shared parking plan that was submitted. Um, Mr. Henney submitted a, a letter, it was a, a lengthy analysis, it was dated November 2nd, 2015, which I believe is already <coughs> part of the record. So we're, we'd like to rely upon that uh, analysis for, for tonight's purposes also. Um, this, the shared parking analysis um, is basically the concept that the office building is only open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, the, the restaurant use that's being proposed is something where the, the peak hours are going to be dinner time and on the weekends, um, which the office building um, most likely will not be in use or there won't be any conflict between those spaces. Um, in addition to that, I know Mr. Henney just today was able to speak with many of the tenants that are currently there in the office building. And if I, if I can approach to add something to the record. What I just handed up to add to the record um, are letters signed by uh, a majority of the tenants that are in the office building confirming that they understand what the application is and that they're uh, very much in favor of it. Um, Mr. Henney is not only the, the operator of this restaurant, but he owns the building. Um, his office tenants are um, his bread and butter, so to speak, and he would not uh, move forward with this type of proposal if it in any way jeopardized the, the office space and the tenants that are there. Have some of the tenants asked for it? The need for this kind of space? Absolutely, um, right. which is what, another reason why Mr. Honey is looking to pursue with this. Um, but this is for them and the public. It is, it is. Um, the community room itself, as we had spoken about, um, is not something that's going to be open um, all hours every day. It's something that will be just for um, temporary engagements. And um, I think that's it. Are there any questions? I just have a couple of quick questions Absolutely. before on the and the tent. Yes. Uh, is that something that's going to be up? Is this like a wedding type tent where it's up for one night and taken down, or is that going to something that's going to be up all summer? I mean, so what do you what's your intent with this tent? The intent of the tent. The intent of the I, tent. I believe it will be taken down after an event. Yeah. Well, I've talked to tent companies, and what they'll do is they'll come out and put it and put it up. Yeah. Like the day before. The Can you say your name for the record? Just. I'm sorry. Just, okay. Do you want to come up here? Yeah. Okay. So we had a uh, couple of tent companies come in and talk to us, and the idea is that they come in the day before an event, put it up, put the tent up, the event takes place the next day, and then they come the day after and take it down. And that's basically it. But it would not be up on any kind of a, I guess you'd say a, a permanent temporary basis. It'd be a day at a time. <clears throat> And keep in mind, the, the, the primary feature of this restaurant is the view of the river. Um, the outdoor deck, the patio, uh, the tent obviously would inhibit that view a little bit. So it's not something that I think the owner would prefer to keep up uh, for any extended period of time because it would inhibit the view. And then the other issue is, of course, if, if a wedding were to say, uh, wanted, if, if, a, if a bride and groom wanted to have a wedding take place on the patio and the weather doesn't... Uh, comply, we need to have some place where we can put them because they're not going to, uh, obviously they're not going to sit outside in a torrential downpour. And I'm assuming you would always be renting, you'd never own your own tent. I'm sorry? You would always be renting, never owning your own tent? I, I, I have no idea. I don't know what the economics of tent ownership are. I'm just saying, like, because then 
if you did own it and you put it up yourself, then it might stay up for. Well, I still take it down yeah. because the thing of it is, if we, I mean, if I find that, you know, if I rent it five times, I could have bought the tent. I'm probably going to buy the tent. I just, I mean, I just, having never really explored tents. <laughs> I think, did you think we'd be talking so much Sir, about tents right now? He is. I am uh, with the temporary nature of it, and that you are putting it up, it's taking it down on a regular basis. <laughs> And then if a busy June comes along, you have a couple of weddings in a row, you're not going to leave it up for the week, you know, that kind of thing. Well, that's a good question. I mean, I, I mean if I have uh, weddings back to back, which would be a nice yeah. feature, I'd love to be in that position. It's the nature of a tent. It's temporary. And the location is, can have issues, not necessarily in June, but uh, it can. Uh, even though it tends to be higher there than it is in other locations along the river. So that's, oh yeah. That's some one of the reasons we ask these questions. Oh yeah, no. I mean, well, first of all, very rarely does the water get up in, in, on our property to that level. Right. Obviously, that tent would be long gone before any water would. And plus, that would probably be in April, and I can't imagine anybody would want to be outside in April. I mean, my guess is we'd be having weddings inside at that point. And as Frank Morris said, the river always comes up gradually and goes down the same. He always said that. That's true. He's right. Yeah, it is true. We always know when it's coming. Mr. Chairman, I just have a quick question for staff on this. Um, Peter, in the review uh, that staff did of the application, did you find any um, uh, cause for any concerns relative to uh, any wetlands or uh, environmental riverfront? Uh, you know, problems or conflict with the federal or state regulations with regarding water courses, wetlands, et cetera? So the patio had been previously approved, so we went through uh, various uh, gyrations on the construction uh, underneath the building, so that those were separate matters which were dealt with um, through uh, DEP as well as our Wetlands Commission. Uh, the nature of the tent being seasonal, removable, uh, doesn't generate the same concerns that we would have. Uh, the area uh, of the lawn and where the tent is going is in the flood zone, so precautions would obviously have to be taken in the event of uh, rising water, um, which kind of dovetails on the question about the tent. So uh, historically, uh, tents are regulated by the fire marshal. Uh, someone will come in, uh, the tent provider, for example, uh, will come in and pull a permit, and then the fire marshal will go out and inspect uh, the, the tent once it's up to make sure it's safe and there are also other regulations in regards to what you can and can't do in the tent so um, and then through that process it's a temporary approval um, he establishes how many people can use the tent given the size of it the occupancy and, and all of those things so it would be inherently built into that process after you guys approved it where he would have to come for uh, each event uh, so he would develop a, a very close relationship with the uh, the tent people or the owner, if he invent, invests in a, in a permanent tent, to understand all the ins and outs of that. So, Is there any cause for concern about any kind of environmental contamination from the activities that would be carried on? Uh, you know, potentially, on tent? sure, potentially. I mean, depending on what they're doing. And uh, But the, I, I envision, given the restaurant relationship, a lot of the cooking, supplying the weddings and all of that will be taken care of within, a, with all, within all of those facilities. So, um, uh, you know, it's just like anything else. It has to be policed. You know, if there's litter and, and that kind of thing, it's going to have to be dealt with. But since the cooking and all that will likely be done inside, uh, a lot of the concerns we would normally have would go away because it's being done within, you know, existing equipment and, you know, through the normal channels. So does the applicant have any uh, any comments with regards to uh, this question or concern with respect to with regards to the operations you know basically outside in the tent a risk of uh, environmental contamination or degradation of the site well, I think the activities really, that would be carried carried on well the so, way it, the way it would operate or at least our vision for how it would operate is that basically all the food would be prepared inside in our kitchens and then would be taken by hot box and put in buffets out there. So I'm not sure how there would be any chance for any kind of contamination. Um, I, I mean, other than just, you know, human beings can contaminate if they want to. I mean, I, 
but I'm not sure. Obviously, we're not going to allow people to uh, throw garbage around or anything like that, and we would clean any, up anything after an event was over, because that obviously is in our best interest to keep it pristine and clean. And well, the, the, the applicant so is the owner of the property, so yeah, he's I certainly going to... I appreciate your reassurance there. Um, we would certainly police that. And my concern is, you know, what our jurisdiction is really with this temporary structure uh, and what we're really voting on. I mean, couldn't he just, or any other, uh, you know, person in this town pull a, a permit for a tent? And what's special about this particular permit that we have to vote on? It? So the distinction uh, is that most people would, on rare occasions, put up a tent for a function. This would be a permission for a series of recurring events that they want to add to their uh, operations there that uh, uh, are of a level that require oversight and and you know permissions. So there could be significant events and going on there. And uh, the other part of that is to obviously make sure and feel comfortable with the overall parking uh, situation out there for events of uh, you know the magnitude where a couple hundred people could show up. So um, yeah, this is uh, distinct and different than anything else I can think of uh, in town. The only comparable. Uh, thing I can think of and it's been going on for I think long before um, Many of you have been on the Commission is at the uh, uh, Webb Dean Stevens Museum mm -hmm. where they have the barn and they also have uh, events where tents are required They already have a process in place working with the fire marshal to get those uh, up and installed and permitted on a case-by-case -case basis, so um, That's probably the only other comparable maybe the country club does you know, but not you know, as frequently as this potentially could so could be. Vote in favor. Does he come and pull the permit once, uh, and then obviously the fire marshal you know approves it, or does he come every time? Is that once for the summer? I mean, how, how so you're you're giving him the blanket <coughs> approval for the activities as as defined on that plan. Uh, so he has permissions that run with the property. Uh, how he decides to uh, go forward with that permission on a case by case basis is really up to him. Um, obviously working with the other codes that apply. So um, you're giving him a, a permit that runs with the property to do this overall activity because it, it wasn't part of his previous patio uh, application. So uh, that's probably the way I would best describe it. And then the, uh, you're going to keep it grass underneath this tent or are you going to put some other type of material? I'll be honest with you, I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, I don't know what the tent will do to the grass. so. All that has to be explored. Yeah, and I think if it, uh, well, obviously it's up to the commission, but if, if anything other than grass, I think that would be a different application for us to consider. So yeah, I, I mean, that, that might be a wetlands thing. Too. And wetlands would get into yeah, that. Yeah. You know. So I can see it as a temporary nature, but if it goes all summer, you have and some other type of material goes right. down there. It's, I think it's something that we were not voting on today. Any right. other I questions? They want to leave it natural, then no question in my mind. I have a question. I'm looking um, at the egress plan. And I'm looking at the fire marshal's comments. Was he aware that the lobby was going to use as a place of gathering? Because if you're going to have a wedding, you have a dance floor, you have tables, you have chairs. Was he was he aware? Aware that it's, it's now change of use from 100 square feet of person to you know down to maybe you know, I'm not sure what place for gathering is, but the um, in his approval letter, he never mentions the use of a lobby, the lobby being used for for weddings or special occasions. I, he's yeah, aware. he was aware of it. I mean, we talked okay. about what we were going to, the, the whole, the, the reason this came up was because of the expansion of our liquor permit. And so that's okay, why. I just want to make sure he was aware because the seagrass plan does not show the change of, change of population for the use of the lobby. And, it, you know, the overall, I'm just making sure the fire marshal knew of it. Did you say? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. The, the fire marshal had to sign off for the expansion of the liquor permit. And so it was fairly clear to him that we were going to be serving alcohol out in the lobby. I'm not worried about the lobby. I'm, I'm, the alcohol, what I'm worried about is that he knows the lobby will no longer be used as a lobby. It'll be used as a dance floor as a place of gathering and tables. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it was ever proposed to be used as a dance floor, was no, it? No, no. <clears throat> I, I don't know. You said weddings were going there. So I, Envision more for overflow purposes. Um, okay. If someone yeah. was going to reserve the entire <clears throat> building for a wedding, if somebody wanted to walk through the lobby with a cocktail, uh, for liquor control purposes, we need to make sure that it, it's approved. 
And yeah. to, to do I that, that's how this. I'm just when I was reading through, no, the, I just noticed he did not approve. It says the dance floor would be in the river. In the river. Okay. I'm not, I'm just, I'm just saying in his approval letter, he never mentions the use of a lobby as a place to have a function. But that's now he is. I right? Right? Now he is. <clears throat> he said it right. Okay. Or, or as a condition, if the commission votes in favor, you can certainly add that as yeah, a condition I, I just, if, that, if, that, if we go down that road. I have no problem with doing it. I'm just saying it's okay. not on the letter. Yep. Mr. Chairman? <clears throat> Question. Yes. Okay. Can I get into another subject that bothers me here? Uh, and I think you can answer it, of course. Is two places in here you mentioned that you don't have enough parking. Uh, one of them you come up with the difference and what is it like 30 or 40 units uh, 30 less I think uh, you're providing <coughs> Kevin gonna come up with that Kev then, Kevin's the numbers guy with the parking <laughs> then while you're at it bigger question for you uh, you mentioned valet parking where are you gonna valet cars to in the, the southwestern the south end of the lot no what happens in the lot is filled. The, the lot hasn't been filled since I've owned the it building. Never been filled? Never. Not one day. What happens if this becomes an important wedding emporium? <laughs> well, but it won't be a, an important wedding emporium during a normal business day. I mean, typically people don't have weddings on Tuesday okay. morning. So at, that lot will never be filled, as far as you're concerned. Uh, it, it never has been. Okay. And the, and the, well, this is different the, now. The one that's open, uh, the part, portion of it that's always open, is the uh, southwestern portion of the parking lot, and that, and we're only talking about a need for about 18 cars, correct? Yeah, I think it's like 20. Based on our calculations, I think it was 18. <laughs> for the record, Kevin Johnson, Close Jensen, and Miller. So, on our site plan for the community room, again, as Attorney Silver mentioned and. Mr. Henney has mentioned, it's primarily for tenants of the building. <clears throat> Their parking needs are already tabulated under the office component on that parking chart. There could be an occasion when there is another event booked and there could be some outside people coming in. Based on the square footage of that community room, the occupancy would be 105 people. Um, a couple scenarios, how to apply the parking ratio for a place of assembly. Um, in this situation, we think, you know, the tables, uh, the one per four is a more appropriate ratio. One, one parking space per four occupants. So that would require plus or minus 26 parking spaces. So when we were here in 2015, there was approximately 123,000 square feet of office space. Because we have lost some of that office space now to convert to the community room, we're down to about 121,000 square feet and some change. Applying the parking ratio to that difference, it equates to about nine spaces. So if you needed 26 spaces plus or minus, for the community room, we have a savings of nine spaces from the difference in the office component, square footage. It means we're probably short by zoning 17 or 18 parking spaces. And I think that's what Mr. Henney is saying. If the entire parking area was filled or almost filled, which has never happened in 40 years. 30, it's not that old. Not okay. That old. <clears throat> <laughs> that he would that he would valet the parking. Excuse me. Basically, in this southwest corner of the parking lot. So, if he was to valet them, and, and the reason we're saying this corner is this aisle. If there was ever an emergency, you know, fire apparatus, whatever. They're probably not going to come down this far aisle. They're going to come down the main entrance, <clears throat> one of these main aisles, possibly this one. They're probably not going to come down this aisle. So if Mr. Henny were to valet park 
nose to tail, five cars, <coughs> you know, I think there's like 80 foot distance here. It would mean like four rows of cars for you know, a few hours, whatever that event would be. But basically it would be valet in this corner and then shuttle to the So you're not meaning valet off site? No, valet okay. on site. That's what I wanted to get clear. They don't have any off-site location. No, you can just it's compact the cars into one little quadrant. Around you. So, yeah, it'd have to go somewhere in town, maybe. But whatever. You're not, you don't feel it that you <clears throat> Okay. And the assumption is when the, if there is a, a large banquet or a large wedding, the office is going to be closed, so the park, there'll be ample parking. Yeah. Fine. Um, my questions are answered along that. Any other questions from the commissioners? Yes, Mr. Chairman. A uh, couple of things. Uh, on page two of uh, uh, the town planner's uh, memo, he indicates that the plans should be revised to address the following. And he's got uh, three items. The plan should be modified to incorporate the required uh, PCC approval block. The plan should include notations, etc. And C, add notation to the site subject to a shared parking uh, agreement. Uh, have, I did, my question is, have the plans uh, been revised to reflect uh, those concerns? Uh, not yet, but should be added in any motion to approve. Yep. Okay. The, the applicant has no objection to the proposed comments and subject to staff uh, comments. Those plans can be updated accordingly. And secondly, um, in, in your comment section, same page, uh, uh, it states that the commission should discuss whether conditions should be attached to the approval of the community room and wedding activities as they relate to the normal business functions of the office building. And based upon the comments that I've heard tonight, I, I, I don't see uh, uh, any great concern on that avenue. I was wondering if you have you know, anything to add to, to that uh, expression or whether uh, or not uh, you see, you know, problems or, or conflicts uh, relating to that issue. I, it was put into the memo so that uh, I wanted to make sure you had an understanding of the operations of the office versus these activities, and it sounds like uh, you answered that question by hearing what they what they said about that. Thank you. That's into my questions. And whatever representations they've made will constitute the shared parking agreement that yeah so we'll have to develop uh, that so there is an understanding and a documented I mean it's all been you know there was information submitted with the application there was testimony tonight so all of that will be put together to for a documented understanding of that as a condition of approval yeah I mean it, it could just be a supplement of the existing letter explaining the, the parking calculation right Any other comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, I'm going to open it up to the public. Any public comments at this time? Hearing none. Motion to close. Motion to close. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Any discussion or motions? I'll make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, but I don't know what the conditions should be. You know, we got a few conditions, right? Doctor, we talked about the written agreement. Well, actually, I'll let you go. So um, condition regarding the uh, three uh, plan revisions, including the shared parking agreement. I think you wanted a uh, condition on the fire marshal uh, uh, documenting the fact that uh, he is uh, satisfied with the proposed uh, use of the lobby. Um, State tent, state tent regulations and the, and that the uh, yeah. each tent installation complies with the requirements of the state of Connecticut tent regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, written par parking agreement is that also? Well, the shot that was in the first, first series, okay. so it would be those three conditions: the uh, fire marshal lobby approval, and then the fire marshal um, Connecticut tent regulations. And then could I add hours of operation consistent with their representation? I don't think so down there. There's no 
Well, the office can, hours they could yell pretty the, loud down there at some party and nobody will hear. I think I think that that'll be that'll be part of the shared parking uh, uh, structure. With some obviously with some wiggle room, it's. Is there a, uh, and, and I would add uh, the two. I didn't hear specific reference to the uh, conditions uh, uh, A and B that was that were expressed on page two of the uh, town planner's memorandum. Uh, yeah, the, in there. the approval block yeah. and uh, yeah. the notations yeah. regarding re you, removal of temporary uh, yeah. appurtenances yeah. to the yeah. operation. And George, you agree with all those uh, stipulations? Yeah, I do agree. And uh, I'd like to make a comment at this point before we vote. There's not a second yet, so. I'll no second it so that you can make a comment. Second, we'll open up the discussion. Um, I go way back on this commission. I don't want to repeat those years again. <laughs> um, but this location was approved originally, if I recall, um, for a possible restaurant. In fact, it was suggested way back when this was done and the office building was put in, it might be a restaurant and we might, they might bring Pier 4 from Boston in at that time. Now, Pier 4 for recent people, I don't even know if it's still down in Boston. I think uh, our firm, that from, uh, down Connecticut went up there and they might be tearing it all down that, that port area but whatever um, that was envisioned at one point so this has always kind of been uh, thought of as a possible restaurant way from way back then it may not have been active over those years but I'm kind of glad to see a move in that direction so that's why I would favor this it, it may not be a big restaurant like that was envisioned of course but uh, I think it makes sense down in there, and it's a good location right off of 91. Um, it's, I wonder if it could become bigger than what they're bringing to us tonight. That's my only concern, and that's why I was concerned with the parking issue. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, item four, other business. Or I guess let's go right to minutes. Or actually, let's get one of the minutes. We're gonna do minutes, George, you read the minutes? Any comments? Uh, yeah, let me, uh, hold on a sec. Um, October 3rd, the uh, 17th is good. Just one little thing. So little, I don't really want to mention it, but I will. Uh, page uh, six. October third. Uh, the word he claims, the last paragraph, the beginning of it, second <clears throat> sentence. He claims he tailed. I guess told to the ta tail to town. Probably taught. told. Taught. Town staff. I don't know which. It's not the case. Talked. 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 There's a K missing. Yeah. Okay. Fine. That's the only thing. Otherwise, fine. Motion to approve. Um, I think we have enough here, right? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Minutes pass. Uh, October 17th. Minutes? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Minutes are approved. All right, item seven, public comments on general matters. Uh, any public comments at this time? Looks like we have none. Uh, any correspondence? Any additional correspondence? Just the, just, we have a letter um, October 22nd from uh, attorney T.J. Donahue regarding the um, music at 222 Main Street. Uh, just so you are aware, uh, attorney Donahue met with the town manager some weeks ago and is meeting tomorrow with uh, the zoning officer and myself. He is representing a na the neighbor on uh, Marsh Street about the permit. So we will keep you posted. Thank you. Thanks. Any other correspondence? Uh, they took the, uh, excuse me, uh, one second on that one. They took the shrubbery down behind it, right? Or was that a long time ago? <clears throat> they put some uh, arborvitaes in. Right. And the town uh, painted the building? The, the town is uh, in the process of having the building like painted right now. If you go by there, you'll, they're working on it as, you, as we speak. Scaffolding is up. In between the rain, obviously. 
So this lady got still so upset that she sued? Uh, there is no lawsuit pending. She has uh, retained a legal counsel to uh, investigate, investigate uh, the situation. And uh, so other than that, I, since I haven't met with him, I'm not sure exactly. Okay. So you're not sure he really wants to go to court? We will, we will find out. Okay. He's closed okay. for the season now, I assume. The outdoor, I, I think the seating is still out there, but I imagine the activity levels have dropped off. Uh, significantly <laughs> we do have some applications coming up um, as you can see and um, the gas station uh, and self storage up on the Berlin Turnpike uh, will also be coming back for revisions to that plan so uh, those will be subject to further public hearings again so there are some there are some applications uh, coming up uh, in short order Motion to close. Wait a minute. Any other uh, comments, George? You got anything more? We're ending a little early tonight. <laughs> I have a question. Hold on. That's why you're unsure. I spent 20 years of my life at the Department of Housing, state level. I have some concerns with this. Is, is this meant for us to really review? I started reading it, but I got bored with it. It's one of the most involved, contrived things I've ever saw in my life, but it was notice. back 20 years <laughs> ago. I, I can't help you with uh, the board part, but certainly uh, if you'd like to discuss it at some point at a meeting, we can do that, but it's just, yeah, uh, just yeah, informational. You want to know why? Because at one point, they would not allow our public housing units to be included. I don't know why, because they were owned by the town and not by the state under a mortgage at that point. And I thought it was weird, but I never, you know, I've wondered since then, and that was a long time back, if they've corrected all of that stuff as far as our, our count. situation. And if, if we had any problem, will we have any problems from what you can see with that? Uh, we still uh, are not one of the communities that, uh, ex is that exe met the exempt has met the requirements, but you raise a, you raise an, uh, interesting point. I've never actually seen the list of I what they like count. I would do that and investigate it and tell the manager, please, that I question it way back then, and I assume they might have corrected it, but they might not have. Okay. Because even back then, I, were, I think they weren't even considering CHFA units, for example. Okay. And, and I think they corrected that readily, but they may not have this other issue. Okay. I can uh, look you. into it. Yep. Just make it more complicated. Make it more complicated. Any open discussion? Any open motion to close? Motion to close. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. For what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, she is to generate the minutes, so usually the minutes we'll get uh, today's Wednesday. So no later than Monday, and then the letter will be generated shortly after that. So, um, if you uh, want, you can uh, file for the building permit yet, but we're going to do anything to please ya. So good, you make me flip. Let's arrange that wedding trip when the preacher says, Dick.